Okay, you can turn in your Bible to John chapter 8, the book of John and chapter 8. The question comes up, does believing on Jesus save you? been a big debate for many years now. What is salvation? What is repentance? Is there repentance of sin? Is there uh, changed life? Is there what is lordship salvation? What is free grace? What is easy believism? What is quick prayerism? What is all this stuff? Um, what's the Bible say about the thing of belief? All right. Um, get your King James Bible out and actually look at these verses. Because a lot of people out there, they'll say, well, just simply believing in Jesus, that's all it is, that's all salvation is. Well, let's check on that here. John chapter 8, verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. You see, what's well, pre-crucifixion, we'll, we'll get back to that in just a little bit. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He's speaking to the ones that are believing on him. All right? If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Well, what in the world? And then it goes down through. Jump down to verse 44. Uh, it says here, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And you go down through there, the whole thing, they're, they're arguing with him. But this is the group that believed on him. Huh? So they believed on him, and Jesus comes, he didn't say, oh, you believe in me? Great, that's all it takes. Whatever else you want to do, just, you know, they believed on him, and yet Jesus says, hey, you need to consider a few other things here. Hmm. John chapter 12. And you can use dispensational teaching, by the way, as a real good crutch. You can say, well, that's that's there, and, and you know, it's in the Gospels, so we can we can reject it. It's before the crucifixion, so you know, whatever, whatever. Okay, but uh, you have to look and see if there's a precedent in the Pauline epistles that matches what Jesus is saying here. And there is. I'm going to show it to you. You see, obviously, Matthew chapter 24 is written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. Certainly. You compare it with what Paul says is revealed to him. He reveals the mystery of the catching up of the body of Christ, the resurrection. Jesus Christ refers to it in John chapter 11, but it's revealed to Paul. All right? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. It's revealed to Paul. So Jesus speaks about something in the Gospels, and then he reveals it through Paul. Matthew chapter 24, there's nothing like that in the Pauline epistles. There's nowhere in there where Paul's saying, hey, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. You know, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Where does Paul ever talk like that? He doesn't say, you know, make sure that, you know, when you go to the holy place every year or whatever, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Again, you compare Scripture with Scripture. Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore the Millennial Kingdom. But the things that Jesus is talking about here, people believing on Him and yet they're fake, they're frauds, that carries into the Pauline epistles. And I'm going to show it to you. John chapter 12, verse 42 through 46. It says here, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers... Also, many believed on him. They believed on Jesus. They believed that he was the Messiah. They believed, hey, this is the guy here. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus, and cry, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. Who sent Jesus? Oh, that would be God the Father. Okay, um, then why would Jesus say there in verse 45, 
He that seeth me seeth him that sent me. <laughs> Sorry to you Trinitarian people out there that believe in three different gods. You know, God in three persons. You know, <laughs> whatever. Verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And, you know, of course, the easy believers and heretic, they'll say, well, it says should. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we have to. Uh-huh, right. Yes, you do. You have a changed life when you get saved. I'm going to show it to you here in just a minute. But again, you see people there, verse 42, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. All right. Were they saved? Can you believe on Jesus but not confess him and be saved? Uh, no. No, you can't. And you say, well, that's ridiculous. All it is is belief. That's all it is, okay? What about all the LGBT churches out there? And how many are, you know, new little letters are there behind it and whatever? The sodomites. What about them? They're sodomite churches. I had some guy the one time, one of these easy believers and heretics, and he came out and he said, show me one gay church that has a plan of salvation on their website. I sent him three, including one that was Baptist, because this guy was a Baptist. There's a lot of gay Christians out there, call themselves Christians. Are they saved? They believe in Jesus. How about all the atheists out there that say, I was raised Christian. I believed in Jesus until I went off to the university or until I watched some videos on YouTube or something. All of a sudden, they don't believe in Jesus anymore. But they did. They had simple faith. They believed in Jesus. What about them? Are they saved? There's a lot of people out there that believe in Jesus. All these church buildings out there all across this nation, all across the world, a lot of people believe in Jesus. Yes, some Catholics out there, oh, they believe in Jesus. And they're all saved. And those like me who believe that uh, if any man be in Christ, old things are passed away, all things are become new. Somebody like me, I'm a heretic, I'm lost, I'm lordship salvation, you know, as they say. Uh, there's no such term in the Bible, it's a made up thing, and they change the rules of that all the time. But I'm lost because I believe in a changed life. I can say, yeah, I used to be like this guy right here. My old life, tattered and torn, filthy rags of my own self-righteousness, horrible life, miserable, and then Jesus saved me, and now I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now I, I have the righteousness of Jesus Christ upon me. See? But I'm lost. But the people out there that just have a belief in Jesus, they're saved. Sure. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you say, well, that's the gospel. What, what's the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I mean, these people that in, in the gospels there, in the book of John, yes, they believed on Jesus, and, but they didn't confess him. And, and Jesus, you know, in John chapter 8 especially, they believed on him, but Jesus goes on to rebuke them and call them the year of their father, the devil, even after they say they believed on him. You know, but to see, that's before the crucifixion. So we could just go and ignore it because there's nothing in the Pauline epistles like that, right? Wrong. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. They've received it. They're supposedly standing in it. By which also ye are saved, if... Now, let's learn a little simple English lesson here, okay? If is a conditional clause. If I say to you, I'm going to give you $1,000 tomorrow, period. Or I'll, I'll say it this way. I'm going to give you $1,000 tomorrow when you come to my house. All right? Um, there's no conditions on that. You get here to the house, I'm going to give you $1,000, all right? Don't show up because I'm not doing it. It's just for illustration, okay? If I say, I'm going to give you $1,000 tomorrow when you show up to my house if you bring me $2,000 in cash, I'll give you 1000 back, <laughs> you know? I put a conditional clause there, you see. 
you can't just show up and say, hey, you promised a thousand dollars. You know, if I showed up here, you know, today and things and you said tomorrow, so I'm here today and, you know, no, no, because I put a conditional clause on it. Look at the conditional clause by which also ye are saved if, if, there's a condition in other words, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain. Did the people in John chapter 8, did they believe in vain? Yes. They're believing him because of the miracles. They're believing him because of some of the stuff he's saying and he's making the Pharisees look stupid and whatever else. And they're saying, I think this is the guy. I think this is the Messiah. And Jesus is looking at him saying, you're not anywhere even close. Your heart's not right. You're believing in me in vain, in other words. Just like a lot of the people that I mentioned previously. Oh, I'm a gay Christian. Mm -hmm. You're going to give up that wicked sin that God calls an abomination? Oh, no, it's my lifestyle. What are they doing? They're believing in vain. What about all these church buildings out there? All these people. Oh, we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We're going to live like the world, look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, think like the world, but we believe in Jesus, so we're saved. No, you're not. You believed in vain. And that's why a lot of these people that go through this thing, they'll come out later as atheists because their belief was in vain. That's the whole thing. Well, let's continue here. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Who did he receive it from? Jesus Christ. But Jesus gave him something different than what was there in the Gospels in terms of people coming and having false belief. That doesn't exist anymore because all it takes is belief. If you believe, you're saved. You can live however you want, sin as much as you want without any conviction. Uh, no new creature in Christ Jesus. No, 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 no. Um, only the people, the only people that are lost are those that say you have to be a new creature in Christ Jesus and change your life and, and you know, holiness and righteousness, all that yucky stuff, you know. Uh, no, that, those are the lost people. Those are Lordship salvation, you know. That's what Jesus gave to Paul, right? I mean, Jesus rebuked people that just said, we believe on you, Jesus. And then he's rebuking them like crazy, calling them, you know, you're your father, the devil. Uh, he did it, but he tells Paul, hey, stop that. Don't do that anymore. That's too judgmental. Don't do that. All it takes is belief. Just belief. <laughs> I don't think so. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. He died for your sins? But uh, after you get saved, you can just continue walking in this world here. The sins that He died for, you can just continue on with them. No new creature in Christ Jesus. No new life. It's so funny, the attitude of these easy believers and people towards sin. When you're a sinner and you come to Jesus Christ for for salvation, you're saying, I'm so sick and tired of this life. I'm about ready to blow my brains out. I want, I, th there has to be something real in this world. There's got to be something there. Somebody says, oh yeah, you can have salvation, but you're not going to have any help with your sin. You're just going to go on living like the way you've always done. Well, why would I want that? I don't want that. I want to be a new creature. I want this. I don't want to live this in this world over here anymore. This world's messed me up. This world's given me nightmares. This world's made me sick. This world's destroyed my relationships. This is just this is terrible. I don't want that anymore. I want something new. You get it? Verse 4, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Okay? He died for your sins. but you can continue on with them. No, you can't. See, that was the problem with the people, the chief rulers and the other Jews and things that were hearing Jesus. They were looking and they were saying, uh, hey, I, you know what? These miracles, I mean, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Well, that was before the, you know, chapter 8 there would have been before Lazarus raised from the dead, but chapter 12 was afterwards and they're going, this guy raised a guy from the dead. I heard about it. My brother-in-law, he was there and, you know, 
And I mean, I've, I've seen some stuff here. I mean, he, I think he's the one. And Jesus is saying, okay, you're going to come after me? Take my yoke upon you? And let me tell you how to live your life and what things need to go? And all of a sudden they're going, uh, uh, well, um, uh, hey, would you look at the time? i got to get going. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, people don't want to get saved because they don't want to give up their sin. That's the whole truth of the matter. They don't want uh, the Lord getting into their business. You know, they couldn't keep the same company. Couldn't have a good job and couldn't get the promotions at work and couldn't have good family relations and whatever else if they really truly got saved and born again. And uh, That's the whole issue. But let me show you a good example of this. People that have truly believed what happens as a result. Acts chapter 19. And i got to say something else, too. It just cracks me up. Um, a lot of these heretics that were coming out, free grace and easy believers and whatever you want to call them, lost sinners is what I like to call them. A lot of these people are coming out and they were saying, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's not Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. That's not the Gospel. That's for Jews. Um, it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, all of a sudden, those of us that are saved start to say, yeah, but at verse 2 there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, unless you've believed in vain. Now they're coming out and they're saying, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. Never mind verses 1 and 2. And I kid you not, I mean, that's, that's what these people are doing. It's really kind of funny. Acts chapter 19, verse 18 through 20. And many that believed came and confessed. And showed their deeds. All things are become new? No, that's, that's, that's Lordship Salvation. I guess these people were Lordship Salvation people. Uh, no, they were genuinely saved. What was the problem with the chief rulers in John chapter 12? They wouldn't confess Jesus. They kept their mouth shut. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. These people were truly saved. They, many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Works meet for repentance, in other words. Prove to me that you're saved. Well, I'll tell you, you know, nice little profession here, and, and I'll give you my little testimony. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but show me your deeds. What have you given up since you've gotten saved? How have things changed? Those are the questions. Verse 19, many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Um... Let me just put something out there to you. If you can tell me that you've gotten saved after many years of being lost, you know, I don't believe in childhood conversions. That's, they're fake. So you'll get to a point in your life as a teenager or 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, or even later in life. Um, if you can tell me that you've gotten saved at some whatever point and you've never thrown anything away from your past or burned anything, um, I'd have to question your salvation. Especially nowadays, okay? Um, you're going you're gonna to find a lot of things in your life, in your home, in your personal belongings, among your personal belongings, that are not pleasing to God. And the Holy Spirit's going to convict you of those things. And I've talked to many thousands of Christians down through the years, and I've had them literally say, how do I burn this, or how do I destroy that, or whatever else. Or, you know, I've seen brethren taking, you know, video game consoles out and smashing them with a hammer and, and hey, this thing over here is wicked. Let's destroy that thing and we'll smash it. Holy Spirit truth comes into you and all of a sudden you say, I don't want that thing around me. Mark of true conversion. You can talk all you want to about how Jesus saved you and how it's good to be. You know, you can, I mean, 
you can fake Christianity easily. There's so much information out there. Lost people can study what a Christian is like and whatever else. They can proclaim to be Christians and whatever. They could fake it easily, easily nowadays. But I want to see their works. Show me your deeds after you get saved. That's what's going to convince me. I notice it cost them a lot of money. 50,000 pieces of silver. I don't know what that would add up to in today's money, but I would bet it's probably a lot. <laughs> all right? All these people coming together and bringing this, all this stuff and whatever and burning it. Hmm. And by the way, you know, it says about they brought their books together. You know, Curious Arts and uh, their books there. Um, back in those days, it wasn't paperbacks. All right? Uh, the books that they would have had back then, um, probably a lot of times would have been scrolls or other things and whatever. They would have been handmade leather and, and all kinds of the you know really expensive stuff handwritten that was a big thing to burn back then but they did it they showed their deeds and what happened as a result verse 20 so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed you know what the big problem is with modern day christianity people don't want to have a changed life they try to hang on to the world. And they say, I got my belief in Jesus. I go to my church. I do these nice little things and whatever else. You say, what about personal sin? What about personal conviction of sin in your life? Things that you need to give up. Well, well I, I know other people at church and they do the same things. And, and you know, I, I know the pastor. He's preached this stuff from the pulpit that he likes to watch television. And, and he likes a good movie once in a while and thinks so. Hey, don't you point your finger at me. Don't you judge me. And, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens as a result? The Word of God becomes a powerless book to these people. But to us which are saved, you open this book up after you get saved and all of a sudden this book starts to tell you what to do and the Holy Spirit starts to convict you of sin. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Oh, well, um, and all of a sudden the Lord puts that in your mind. But those movies are there on that shelf. Well, they were given to me as a Christmas gift, Lord. And I mean, I don't watch them that much anymore. And I, I mean, <laughs> and the Lord says, burn them. Burn them. Well, I mean, I could probably get something good on eBay, but the Lord says, burn them. Hey, uh, that rock music over there? Well, oh, Lord, oh, come on in. Okay, you know, I got a little bit of Metallica and I got some ACDC and some of classic rock stuff. Lord, it's not like the new stuff, whatever that means. You know, I don't even listen to it that much anymore, but, you know, I've had those out. Burn it. Hey, the uh, immodest clothing there, Christian lady, that stuff that draws the wrong kind of attention when you go out, burn it. Hey, men, uh, that shirt there, those clothes there, a little bit tight that's uh, designed to show off the physique. Is that becoming of a saint of God to wear? Burn it. And we can keep going, keep going down through the list. There's video games over there. Um, do you really think the Lord wants you being entertained by killing people? Burn it. I said, well, brother, do you want to show your deeds or don't you? Lord's convicting you right now about what you need to get rid of. I went through it for years and years and years. And a lot of things I held on to with a death grip. It was special to me. Um, near and dear to my heart, you know. And, uh, well, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll get rid of that other stuff. But just leave that alone over there. And the Lord says, uh, I want it all. Do you want the power of God in your life? Well, yeah, of course. Okay, then you need to burn some things. Show me your deeds, Brian. Show me your deeds. Show the Lord your deeds. Well, I have a, I have a profession of faith. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. So did the chief rulers. But they wanted the praise of men more than the praise of God. They weren't saved. Simply saying, I believe in Jesus, doesn't mean anything. 
belief in Jesus is part of the gospel. Absolutely. You have to believe that he died on the cross, paid for your sins, died a horrible death for your sins, but then you can continue in those sins. How does that work? You better get right with God. You know, I was discussing this with my wife, and we were talking about the, the game Russian Roulette. And I don't know if people, if you ever heard of that, you probably heard the term, might not know what it is. But the real game of it is you take a revolver that's a double action revolver. And in other words, you pull, if there's a single action, you have to cock the hammer, pull the trigger, cock the hammer, pull the trigger. Double action is you can do the same thing as a single action, cocking the hammer, pulling the trigger. But you can also pull the trigger and the machining inside the thing will make the hammer cock and fire. Okay? Just give you a little lesson there if you don't know. They take the cylinder where all the bullets go down into the cylinder of that revolver. Okay? And they take the bullets out. And they take one of the bullets, stick it back in, spin it, close it, and then the game is you put it to your head and you pull the trigger and the hammer goes back, click. It was an on, on an empty, you know, thing there for the bullet in the cylinder. Then you hand it to the next guy. Click. Somebody's going to get the bullet. That's how that game works. You say, well, that's insane. Who would be crazy enough to play that? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. It's frightening just even thinking about playing a game like that. And yet that's what a lot of people do with their soul. Well, I've listened to so-and-so's videos, and I like his videos more than Brian's videos. I think Brian's a nut, and he's Lordship Salvation, whatever else. And the, I think I'm saved. I, I'm pretty sure I'm saved. You're playing Russian roulette with your soul. I mean, it's one thing to put the gun up to your head and pull the trigger, and boom, you got the bullet, and blow your brains out and drop over bed. You're dead like that. Within seconds, you probably aren't even feeling the pain of it. But what about going to, a, to hell for all of eternity? Where you burn and you burn. Eternal torment. Because you thought that you were saved. Well, I think it'll work out. I think I'll be okay. You know, I'm all right. I mean, we used to get that going door to door and things. You get these people and you'd say, if you died tonight, do you know for sure where you would go? I think I'd go to heaven. I think I'd go. He'd say, how do you know? Ah, I, th I think I'd go. <laughs> and then you're just going, do you realize what you're gambling with here? Do you realize the chance that you're taking? Do you realize that you do not line up with the scriptures? <laughs> get it sorted out. I mean, get it figured out. Well, I think I'll be okay. Oh, okay, you know, whatever. I can't force anybody to be saved. It's between you and the Lord. Salvation is simple. Let me close with this. I was watching a sermon, uh, one of the last that uh, Peter Ruckman did, and uh, he had it called it the Gospel Punch Board, you know, and he was at some church someplace and, and whatever, and, and it was just neat to see him, you know, uh, very, very, you know, old. It's an older man like that, and and he said, salvation is simple. It's ABC of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. That's the A. That's the tough one. And it is. It's hard to say, you know what? Um, I deserve to go to hell. Uh, these sins that have me over here in this world here, these sins are destructive. They're messing me up. It's a terrible thing over here. And it's not people just people wronging me it's hey i've done some things myself i qualify to be a sinner all right admit you're a sinner believe the gospel i'm a sinner i can't possibly save myself jesus christ paid it all on the cross i believe you know what i believe what this book says i don't need to go to greek i don't need to go to hebrew or scholarship or whatever else this king james bible has been around for over 400 years Preachers have preached this thing hundreds of years. The Lord only knows how many people have gotten saved from the preaching of this book right here. I believe the record that this book says about Jesus Christ dying on the cross to pay for my sins, and that's what I need to save me. He had to die in my place. His righteousness will be imputed to me. He takes my sin on the cross, and He gives me His righteousness to pay for those sins that I've done. Admit you're a sinner. Believe 
the gospel. Believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. And confess. Confess it. All right? You know, another another thing there is, you know, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, it says, you know, verse 13 says about the uh, thing of calling upon, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You believe the gospel, you, what do you do with that? Well, you say, Lord, you start to pray to Him. It's not these empty prayers of, God, God, please bless our food, you know, whatever. Uh, please help us with this, or, you know, say a little prayer for it. No, you're actually calling upon the name of the Lord for the first time saying, I am a sinner, admitting to be a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe what this book says right here. God, will you please save me? That's how it starts. So you start the relationship by calling upon the Lord to be saved. So simple. And yet these gospel perverters will try to mess it up. Say, oh, you don't have to ask. You don't have to call. Just believe. Uh-huh. Like the chief rulers and the Jews that Jesus rebuked. Like the people who believe in vain. Paul rebuked in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. What's the confession all about? After you get saved, the Lord's going to put you into situations where you're going to have to say, I'm a Christian. Hey, I got saved. And boy, is your life going to change when you do. All of a sudden, your friends are going to start to kind of fade in the distance and your family is going to start to think that you're crazy in the head and all the other stuff. And you see, that's what the easy believism people really fear. They fear the change that comes as a result of true salvation. So they just kind of pretend that they're saved. They can wear the I'm saved badge when they need to, but then they get around the other type of people and whoop, it goes away and, oh yeah, that's a good joke. Hey, I got to tell you one. Let me just, you know, mm -hmm. oh, uh, bleep, 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 you know, and whatever. And it, they can play Christian. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with these people. Please get your salvation figured out. I mean, I don't care if you hate my guts and whatever else. Make sure that you're not playing Russian roulette with your soul. I think it's just going to be fine. Click. I think it's just my belief here is fine. I think it's just belief only. Because one of these days you're going to fall for one of these heresies and you are going to get your brains blown out, spiritually speaking, and you're going to wake up in hell. The gamble didn't work. That's going to be it. Please, as I keep saying, you need to know for sure that you're saved. That's going to be it. Thanks for watching.